Solver offers a complete suite of BI tools to meet the needs of growing businesses. They are an award-winning global provider of BI solutions for the mid-market. Their BI 360 suite includes a live integration to Sage 300 for reporting, budgeting, and dashboards. Our webinar presenter today is Solver's Michelle Nelson. Michelle is a solutions engineer. She has an undergrad in accounting and master's in computer information systems. Michelle, thank you for presenting the BI360 Business Suite to our clients today. Thank you, Melanie. Um, welcome, everyone, and thank you for sharing this time today with us. Um, I'm going to go over what we're going to cover today. So a little bit about Solver. I'm going to show you the whole BI360 Suite, show you kind of who our customers are, then I'm definitely going to go in and show you our illustration of our product. We'll summarize that up, and then we'll have questions, as Melanie mentioned, and then we'll give you the, any information you need to contact Frontline and Melanie at the end there. So let's talk about Solver, a little bit about Solver. Uh, we've been around 20 years. We're really fast growing. We've got over 100 employees. We're growing our customers very rapidly as well. So we've got 1,300 customers in over 41 countries. So we're definitely global. And a lot of people use us because we have that ease of use system. We've got the whole complete BI suite. And we've got our strong integrations, especially in with Sage 300. Of course, we mentioned some sample awards. We've got some awards over the years from Gartner's Magic Quadrant, if you're familiar with some of that. But that just gives you a quick background of our company. So typically, people looking for a BI solution, they want something that's very intuitive, that leverages their existing Excel skills. They want minimal training. They want to get real-time visualization of their data. And they want to have open access to data. They want to be able to get to their data without having to go through IT. And they want a data warehouse, maybe, to be able to consolidate some of their other outside sources besides their ERP. Those are the typical solutions people look for. So the BI360 suite is composed of four modules. We've got our reporting, our planning, our dashboards, and our data warehouse. So the core product is our reporting. That's where everything starts. It starts in Excel with our report designer. That can be published up to the web. It can be published out from Excel. You can do emails. You can distribute it any way you want. We also have an ad hoc reporting as well, built for ease of access to that data. And the extension of our reporting module goes into our planning module. And this is where you can build uh, forms. You can build um, budget input forms, forecasting, modeling. We have a workflow and assignments so you can submit your budgets quarterly, weekly, yearly basis. And again, those can also be both Excel and web-based. Then we have our dashboards for analytics. So we want to get that pretty view of what everything looks like. Instead of looking at detailed numbers, we want to look at how that is affecting our numbers by looking at dashboards and getting that graphical interface for that. Then we have our data warehouse. And our data warehouse allows you to consolidate multiple sources of data. So that could be your CRM, that could be your payroll, Whatever systems you want to collaborate with and get consolidated view of data, that's what our data warehouse is for as well. So how does it look? How does the architecture workflow? So if you can see in the middle, we've got the data warehouse. Then we've got the Sage 300 down here with all the other sources. So we can have direct live reporting right from your ERP from the to the reporting and to the dashboards. Now, if you want to consolidate, you can obviously push in data from all your different sources, including your ERP, for planning purposes as well. So you've got a lot of flexibility as far as gathering your data, getting live reporting, and setting up planning and, and dashboards. Here's a sample of some of our customers by industry. So we're very agnostic when it comes to the, the verticals in the world. So, you know, we can cross over into industry. So healthcare, hospitality, you know, media and entertainment, retail, not for profit. So there's really no industry we couldn't touch or help with our solution. All right, let's talk about what we're going to discuss today. 
Today I'm going to go over our web portal. This is where you will see the dashboards, the reporting, and our budgeting. Then I'm going to go into our report designer that show you how you can run those formatted reports from within Excel, distribute them out, or build a report as well. Then I'll go into our planning module, show you the budgeting and forecasting, how input forms work, assignments, and our approval workflow. Then we'll summarize up all the different modules that we've looked at today and get into the questions and answers. So right now we are at the web portal for BI360. I can log into our web portal and keep in mind that this is all wrapped around security. So we have the ability to have single sign-on with Active Directory. You could do single sign-in. And so all these controls are going to be based on what you see. So you can set up you know, who sees what categories, who sees what reports. And when we drill down into some of these parameters of each of the reports, you can actually filter out who sees what department, which region. So you've got a lot of flexibility as far as security is concerned. So the nice thing about the web portal is it encompasses everything. So I've got all my dashboards, all my reports, and even my budgeting right here in the web portal. You've got different categories up here. You can have favorites, so these little icons toggle on my favorites. I've got different categories down here, so if I have reports, dashboards, I want to separate them all. I have that capability. Then you've got different view modes. So I've got my carousel mood. Everybody likes this view mode. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go right into our corporate benchmarking dashboard. So this is where we talk about having that graphical interface to our data. Now we could, it can be any data. It doesn't have to necessarily be financial data, so just keep that in mind. So we're looking at this benchmarking dashboard here, and we're comparing our company with the industry average, with Microsoft and Oracle. So obviously this data is being housed in our warehouse because we're pulling data from outside sources, and then we're building this dashboard to give us that view. Now it's very dynamic, so I can hover over the to get the exact period of margins and look at the details of this. We have these little dashlets, so we've got our revenue growth here. So you can build multiple dashlets and build a dashboard with all the different dashlets that you build throughout. Now let's look at another dashboard here. Here's an executive dashboard. It's showing me, again, my revenues, my expenses, and my profits and losses. So I can actually hover over and look at them as well. I have parameters set up here, so I can choose different companies and look at their details, and I can also choose the period in which I'm looking at. The other nice thing about the dashboards here is my ability to drill down. So over here in my headcount, I can actually see actuals versus budgets. I can drill down to the department. So now I'm looking at you know numbers for each of the departments. I can drill up and look at my budget numbers and kind of see they're very similar. Same thing with down here. I've got my website leads. I can drill down to where they're coming from and I can get that detailed data. All my favorites are actually down here. So I'm actually, all my favorites, I could just scroll right next to my, my another favorite and look at another dashboard. Again, we're looking at a CFO dashboard here where I got my revenue by company. So again, ability to drill down through each of my entities and look at the product revenue, service revenues, and so on. And as you see, I, can sele I select the options down here my other dashboards also change. So you've got that capability as well. Now let's go ahead and let's look at a report. So now we've looked at some dashboards and the capabilities of showing that in the portal. Now this is a profit and loss report. If I look up here, I've got my parameters, again, selecting different options. I can also, over here, I have my recent run reports. So anytime I run a report, it'll save it over here, and then I can get to it quickly. Or, again, I could change my parameters at the top here and just refresh this report. So if I look at this report, 
you can see I've got my revenue, my expenses, and of course my net income down at the bottom. What I can also do is I can drill down right into the details of this summary report ledger. So it's going to give me the details and I can drill down, get all the details of that number, and I can also download that as well. The other thing I can do is I can share this out. I've got the capability to use a QR code. I can have a snapshot like a, a website link or live. I could download this file and I can also send it as an email. So let's go ahead and let's download this file to our desktop here. And let's open it up in Excel. I'm showing you right now is that I've opened it up in Excel and it's basically the same as you saw in the web portal. So I can go in here and all my formulas are maintained. I can play around with the numbers and I can analyze this data. And although I'm, I pulled it down from the web, it doesn't change anything that I put up on the web. It's just let me pull it down and play with it. And if I wanted to distribute it out this way, I could as well. It's just showing you how it keeps the integrity of the file once you download it. So we know it starts in Excel, it gets published to the web, and then you can bring it right back down into Excel. Here, let's look at another report. Here is a sales report. Again, looking at the capabilities of building charts right into your, to your file. So we looked at dashboards, but you can also build charts you know, right into Excel like you can and bring that up to the web. Sorry for the click in here. Just showing you some cash flow report, some other reports that you can build in here. So any report that you have, financial, project, sales, can be submitted up to the portal for viewing and setting up the parameters. Let's go back to the library here and let's look at some budgeting forms. If you do any kind of budgets, maybe you have some assumption forms that you fill out prior. So here is assumption form for our budget. So this is for our personnel budget. We've got our payroll taxes, we've got you know our benefits, we've got our capex, we've got days per month, and then we've got our travel and the different currencies. So I could go in here, anything in yellow, I can go ahead and I can just type in my options here and edit those. And once I do that, I save it, I store that data. This data is being stored right back to the warehouse so it's available immediately for reporting on. So as soon as I've done that, I've saved that, I can now go into my budget form and let's go to our personnel budget form. And all those parameters I set up are going to be affected by this form. So I've got taxes up here. There's my FICA rate, my Medicare rate, my maximum. So all those rates that I put in that assumption form are going to be affected by my budget here. So if I just go in and I set up my annual hours for this user, put in their salary. This is saying they're going to get an increase in May at 4% with an increase of $3,900 as well. And it's going to put in those numbers right in my salary. Over here it's going to add up my total compensation and then of course my taxable income which is calculated based on those assumptions that I've inputted. Just giving you an idea of how you can use this in different ways. Let's go back to the budget here. And this is just telling me any kind of time I make changes to a report and I forget to save it, it's going to remind me that I didn't save it. That way if you made any changes and you forgot, you know that you didn't save it. Here is the CAPX. So if I change any of those assumptions in the CAPX form, I can go in here and I can set up my uh, new equipment and it automatically puts in the life there. 
I just type in anything in yellow I'm really typing in and it's allowing me to write back to the warehouse and it's editing that information so I've got you know starting in in February I'm you know have a purchase price times three and it's adding that up I've got my building and my equipment and my computer all separated down here and then I could build in prior year estimates I've got my variance in there and then all of my depreciation expand this up and you can see all that as well so a lot of things you can do as far as input forms but let's talk about um, a budget expense form and this is the one I wanted to show you so in here I've got a budget form it gives me the budget and my for my operating expenses for the year so I've got January through December here's all my parameters up here so if we look at this report you can see okay I got the input for budget and then I've actually got my actuals over here and then I'm also forecasting out the last three months so if let's say I have my actuals all the way through October change this and I refresh my report I'm now going to see all my actuals through October and then it's going to forecast out the last two months so we've got actuals through October and we're forecasting November and December now the unique thing about this particular budget is I can go in here and I can again just type right on right in the yellow lines but the other thing I can do is I can actually right click and it's going to bring me in to a spreading tool so I can go in here and actually spread this so if I wanted to spread 75,000 over uh, evenly over the year and hit apply it just spreads the whole year for me I can also then increase it by a percentage if I wanted to apply 5% bring it back into Excel and it just puts it in the line item for me now the other option again is we could go in in here and we could add line items so over here I hit the plus sign and I can just add in amounts for each line item so this is for conferences so maybe January conference and I just add in another line item maybe user conference and it's just going to roll up that number right into the line item the other thing we can do is add in comments so this is a you know January conference for sage okay I can spell and all those comments will be maintained and you can always come back and look at them or even report on them so you've got the line item details you got the spreading capability right here all within the web portal so that's the web portal it encompasses everything like you mentioned you've got the dashboards you've got the reporting and you've got the budget forms and so on so let's go ahead and let's look at how this all starts or how this is all built with the dashboards just keep in mind they are built right in the portal itself and it is a simple drag and drop but with our reports we have our report designer so let's go ahead and look at some reports here I pulled up some reports that allow me to access your Sage E300 ERP system directly so over here I've pulled up all the modules right within Excel that I have associated with my Sage 300 ERP I can drill down into all the general ledger details the segments the attributes any kind of modules that you have within your system you'll be able to have direct access to them to report on now this is a pre-built template I just wanted to show you what it looks like in Excel the concept is the same over here on the run tab is where you'll see the parameters so I've got my different divisions I can choose from and I've got my different periods and then I just run this report same as you would in the web portal where you would hit refresh if you change the parameters but the concept is the same so you have the option to you're going to build these obviously in Excel but you can publish them up to the web or you can run them directly within Excel 
So here we have actual P&L versus budget summary. So I can again see I'm using Excel functionality by even some of these options over here, grouping things together. And again, you have the same capability to go in and look at the details of this as well. So if I right click and look at the count balance, I'm going to get those details just like you can drill down in the web portal. So again, you've got that flexibility as well. And you can decide, again, what columns you kind of want to look in into the details, so you've got that flexibility as well. That's showing you some reports. I'm going to show you another report over here. Here's an aging report. And again, I'm running it by vendor. And again, I have my grouping as well. So we've got a lot of capabilities here. And just keep in mind, there are going to be a couple different set of users, and the security parameters works the same. Maybe I only see um, certain customers or certain vendors that I'm allowed to see. But that's what I'm talking about when we talk about the security and the ability to really filter out who sees what. Over here, when we talk about the design tab, this is where the power user would come in, the person who is going to actually build the reports. Now, the end user can just see the run tab where they go in and run the reports, similar to what you kind of saw in the web portal. So I've kind of shown you a couple reports. Let's go ahead and let's look at how this is built. I'm going to actually build a report for you. So over here, we've got a blank report. And I'm going to drill into my general ledger summary. And I'm going to build a quick trial balance. And I'm going to put some headers on here. So this is template driven. So however you want to design this is up to you. You've got all the functionalities of Excel to be able to do that. So you saw some of the reports had, you know, additional formatting, maybe the stoplights, that kind of thing. Anything you can do in Excel format wise is what you can build in here. So now I want to do is I'm just going to drag my account right into row 9. What that does is it brings up my report designer pop-up window asking me if I want to expand on my row or my column. So I'm going to select row. Over here, what it does is it puts it in my layout editor. And then I have the capability to actually look at all my accounts here. So I'm building a trial balance, so I want all my accounts. I can either just select all my accounts like this, or if I keep it empty, it's going to pull in everything anyway. But what I want you to keep in mind is you can actually build in your parameters to make sure it covers any accounts that might get added. So if I have any accounts that get added between 10,000 and 75,000, this report is still going to pull in that account. So you can build in ranges so that you always have this valid template that pulls in your trial balance. Just giving you that capability. So now I want to pull in my description over here and also my amount. And again, I'm going to format this as well. Now I want to total my amount down here. I'm just going to sum up that D9 and put a little label on there. So now I've got my trial balance here. Now if I were to run this right now, I've got no parameters set, but just to give you an idea, it's just pulling in all my data. So it's expanding down the row. I'm seeing every single account that I have. But I want to build in some parameters. So what you can do is we have what we call the sheet filters. This is where you're going to build in what they run this report by. So I'm going to select. I want them to be able to run it by period and maybe department. In here, I can create an, a parameter. And you've got some options when you're creating these parameters. So you can have different styles. You've got you know, your edit. You've got your lookup editor. You've got your drop down or your checklist. So you can get very flexible in that. You can also set a default value, maybe a certain department. You can do lookup filters. Maybe I only want them to pull in data from these four departments, so you can filter out departments. 
again, I mentioned that because if you're doing security, you really don't have to worry about that lookup filter because the parameters will be filtered out based on that user security. So if someone only has access to admin or finance and accounting, that's the only option they're going to be able to see. So it's always good to build a template based on all parameters and filter it out based on your users. You've got the capability to allow empty, and then if I want them to allow multiple uh, departments, I can select that as well. So a lot of different options when building in your parameters. So now if I go to the Run tab, I've got the option here now to select my period and my department. So again, I can do a range. I can just do one. I can do a few like that, and I can just run my report. Now, if you want to show the parameters on your report, let's look at our report report parameters down here. I can just drag these over, so make sure I know what department I'm looking at and what period. So it's just pulling in my data to show that. I'm pulling it in for these three departments, and this is my period. Now, the other thing you can do is we talked about the expanding down the row. So we've expanded down all my accounts down the row. Now, what you can do is we can do some comparisons here. So if we were to take this amount and copy it over, and we want to do a comparison, maybe a variance column, and we want to compare last year's with this year's amount. We're going to take the sum of this amount using Excel functionality and just copying that down. So now I've got a variance column. And now what we have is pre-built period functions right into the system here. So I can look at all these. So I've got this period this year, year to date, I've got my quarters, I've got last year, this year, all, I've got rolling months, and so on. So a lot of flexibility. <clears throat> so if I just pull in my year to date in my column, so over here now I've got the column on my functions, so year to date, and now I'm going to pull in last year to date in my other column, and all I have to do is, again, run this report. So now it's taking year-to-date, last year-to-date, and building in my variance. That's how simple it is. And you can expand out those rows if you want to look at periods, each period, as well, and do that comparison. <clears throat> so that's showing you how you can build a report. Very simple drag-and-drop functionality direct access to your ERP live. So this is live data and the simplicity of knowing Excel and having that knowledge to build these reports. So that gives you an example of how you build a report. Now let's go ahead and let's look at the budget side of things. So I'm going to go over here. And over here we've got the BI360 planning menu. Over here we have assignments. You can set up assignments for your end users to enter in budgets, review reports, and then you can build in deadlines that they have to submit the budget by a certain time frame and so on. Let's look at some similar reports you saw in the web portal. So again, the functionality again is the same whether it's in Excel or the web portal. And again, we can pull in that data using the Run tab. So here's my assumptions form, similar form you saw in the web portal, but now you're seeing it in Excel. So again, I run this, I can edit it, my options here, you know, and save it back. We've got the save data back, just like you store data in the web portal. And then, once I've saved this back, again, I can go back into my budget forms. So let's look at that personnel form we saw. Same, it was built in Excel, published to the web. Looking at the same concept here. I'm running that report with my parameters on the Run tab. And then, of course, you're going to see the same 
concept. We've got the FICA, all my rates are up here. So this is the same form. I'm just showing it to you in Excel. So the functionality is the same. I can do my increases here in a certain month, the percentage, and then again it's going to affect all my calculations or my salary and my taxes. So you get the idea of how it can work in either system and the nice thing is you have that option. So I'm just going to show you the expense one to give you the familiarity of it and then we'll look at some other types of budgets. Again, I'm running the report. I've got the yellow input forms. I've got my actuals versus my forecast. And then just keep in mind as well, you've got the different versions here. So we've got budget version versus forecast versions. The nice thing about this is you can have multiple versions. So maybe you have a maybe you do your budget on a quarterly basis, maybe you do it on a yearly basis. You can name these budgets whatever you want, budget one, budget two, you know, first quarter 2016, whatever you name them, and then you can start building the history of all the budgets versus actuals to get you know you where you want to go. Again, the concept is the same. If I say enter data in the gifts here, it's going to pull up my spreading tool. So it's going to pull up the same spreading tool you saw in the web portal, but it's within Excel. And then we can spread with the different types of spreading methods when we get there. But again, I've got my actuals right here, so I can actually copy down my history right to this line and maybe just an adjust some percentage to that. Or again, you can type in a value and spread it evenly as well. So you've got lots of different options for setting up. And then I just update Excel. And then I can just go to the next row. Once I've updated Excel, and go to the next row and here's where you have your line items again same concept adding in line items any comments you want to add over here and then bringing it right back into Excel so you can do your budget that way and then once everything is submitted and entered you save that data and then of course it gets written right back to the warehouse so you have immediate access for reporting so you can enter in your departmental budgets and then of course the final budget for the finance department can look at all the different departments at once, once the data has been saved. Now the other thing you can do within the warehouse we talk about is doing some consolidations. We can um, consolidate with trees. So I don't know if anybody works with trees or any kind of hierarchy. Um, but this gives you the capability to build in trees. So we talk about trees. So we've got our geographical tree here. So we've got uh, our Asian region, our Western Hemisphere, all under the consolidated tree. So I can get one consolidated view of everything and then a separate one for each. So I'm just going to run one for just, you know, the Western Hemisphere here. If I run this, what it's going to do is it's going to give me my profit and loss variance report here. It's going to show me the consolidated view of the Western Hemisphere and then it's going to give me a separate view tab per se for each of the different Corporate Canada and Corporate US. So you can consolidate your data and if this is maybe a multi-company, however you, your system is set up, you have that capability to see that. So again, we're going to see we've got the Western Hemisphere here. We've got our actuals versus our budgets and our variances. We've got the ability to expand into the details, or we can also right click into the details as well. And then I have a separate tab for Corporate Canada and Corporate US. Now the other thing you can do is you can publish these reports directly from Excel. So you can publish this out as a static report. So if I were to publish this out, it's just going to pull my report up in with all the details. 
and you can send that report out. So now I can republish this report and send it out. So the nice thing is you, can, you don't have to be a user of the system to get this report. You can actually just publish it right out to, your, to whoever needs it. But we also have another product which I'd like to show is our publishing tool. And this allows you to set up subscriptions for sending out reports on a regular basis. So sometimes people set up a subscription, what we call a subscription of users, and they send out the monthly P&L report or the balance sheet or whatever reports that you may send on a regular basis. So that allows you to set up a subscription, add in the different parameters, and again, you build in a subscription, you add your reports, so I can select a bunch of reports or maybe just one, and you can even add a whole folder if you have a folder of reports. Down here you select your connection, whether that's come from ERP, your warehouse, wherever the data sits, and then you can actually scroll into the different parameters. Now, this would be more of a static situation, but if they have an end user, then they would only see what they need to see. But you can make sure they only see certain things by building in those parameters. Down here, you add in the different distribution targets, so it can be an Excel workbook, it could be HTML, it could be a bitmap, it can be a PDF, or even a CSV file. So however you want to, your format you want to distribute it as, you've got that capability. You also have the capability to send it to a folder, maybe a SharePoint, uh, email it, or maybe even an intranet. However you want to send that for them to grab, that's options you have. And then you're just choosing who your subscribers are, so the different users of the system. Now down here, you've got the capability to run the, the reports right now and it'll send it out, or maybe you set up a date and time that you send it, maybe once, maybe daily, weekly, monthly, and you can set up those parameters right here. So a lot of flexibility for the publisher to like send out your reports on a regular basis. You just hit apply and then you send that out. So that's a publisher. Now the other thing we can show you is we talked about quickly was an ad hoc tool. A lot of people like to be able to access their data maybe not just by you know building reports but maybe just an ad hoc tool that gathers their data in a quick format. So this is what we call our BI360 Composer tool. And what this does, again, it gives you direct access to your ERP data. You don't need IT to go into SQL and export the data and give you the information. You can have direct access right here. And again, it's very similar to what you saw in the report designer. We've got all our different modules on the left hand side. We can drill into the attributes and dimensions. I can go in and I can just drag and drop right here. So I've got my account, you know, basically we built a trial balance over there, description, you know, monthly amount, and I just refresh that data. And now my data is right there. I can also pull in my department, refresh that and then I can actually just drag it right up there now I've got it by department now we talk about you know how we built those parameters I can pull in my period right up here for some filtering so if I only want to look at data for a certain period of time or even ranges I can select different parameters so really just giving you that flexibility to look at your data right away and then you have the capability to even total, show the row totals. So I got my totals down here for each department. Then you can actually even add in some old calculated columns if you wanted to. 
So you can, we've got these operations controls that allows you to add in different columns and different things as well. So it's just giving you that mm -hmm. flexibility to really have that data in your face, not having to go through IT and just building reports. The nice thing about this, again, is you can save it out to Excel. You can save it as a PDF, or you can export it as a report designer. So maybe you want to start here, and then you want to build your report from here. This is a quick and easy way to kind of do it. So you get an idea to kind of storyboard your report and then push it right to the ex report designer and build your report from there. So we've looked at our reporting module. It's Excel and web-based. You saw it work in both the web portal and you saw how it works in Excel. You've got access to your live financial reporting, your operational data, your sub-ledgers, AP, AR, whatever modules you own. You can drill right down to the GAO details and you can drill across sub-ledgers. Again, you saw that both in the web portal and in Excel. The other thing maybe I didn't mention is we have actually we have mobile apps. So you can actually access those reports through a mobile app. So you can access them anywhere. So we've got apps for both Android and Apple, and you can access them on your iPads, your iPhones, your Droids. So you have that access as well. Then we talked about the automatically scheduling and emailing distributions of reports. That was through our publisher. And you saw how you could just publish it right out directly from within Excel for one report at a time. Some of the KPI graphical formats you saw in the P&L, we had a chart right built right into Excel. So whatever you can build in Excel, whether it's charting or graphical, you have that capability as well. So then we talked about the planning module where you can budget and forecast and you can also do build those assumption forms and drivers. It doesn't necessarily have to be budget of forms, it could be data you want to write back to your warehouse. So you've got the Excel-based budget, you've got the web-based budget, you saw how they both work. You can input data directly into the web portal or directly into your Excel. Uh, you've got pre-built as well as user-defined input templates, so you've got your revenues, your expenses, you know, payroll capex, we looked at a lot of those different ones. We looked at consolidating data through trees as well. You got your budget data immediately available for reporting, so as soon as they save it back, it's right there. Then we kind of talked about the approval workflow, how somebody can come in and set a time frame. Uh, you can do approvals uh, on your budgets and so on. And then there also could be any kind of modeling and what-if analysis. We haven't looked at some of those, but you can do that as well. Then we looked at our dashboards, which is all web-based, and it's conveniently visibility into your business. So you've got that graphical interface of your data, whether that's financial data, sales data, project data. You can build anything based off any data you have. And again, it's web platform. So that was all based in our web portal. And it's fully customizable. You saw how you can build different dashlets into one dashboard. You have different layouts and different chart capabilities. They're very interactive. You saw the dynamics and how you can dra drill down into the data as well. And it gives you instant insight. It doesn't take long to learn how to build these dashboards because they're very drag and drop and user friendly. But again, they're all built within the web portal. And again, you can have it either based off the consolidated data from your warehouse or direct real time from your ERP Sage 300 system. And then we talked about the security and it is wrapped around all of this. Every component has the same security, so whatever they can see, whether it's in the dashboards or in the reporting, all that control is wrapped in every module. Then we talked about the data warehouse. This is where you can centralize, consolidate all your data. If you have data from ADP or CRMs that you want to pull in and you want to start reporting off of, you've got that capability with the warehouse. It's true multi-source data warehouse, and we have pre-configured data. It doesn't take very long to set up. It's all pre-configured. Stage is already pre-configured. We've got an integration with that, so that doesn't take long whatsoever. And some of the CRMs out there and ADPs, we do also have some integrations as well. So it dramatically reduces the time and the risk to implement. You've got the data source in the cloud, uh, user-friendly, you got the business for users and you got the power users 
and we talked about the trees that you can build, you can do roll-ups, and then we also can do currency conversions, eliminations, allocations as well. So you've got a lot of flexibility in that regard. 